Welcome to Rhododendron Week 2022. This year, we're going to explore something of the historic links between the National Botanic Gardens here in Glasnevin and at Kilmacurra. It was in April of 1850 that a packet of seeds arrived to the keeper, David Moore. And just recently, he had completed this remarkable building, the Curvilinear Range, which he had commissioned from one of Ireland's leading ironsmiths. This packet of seeds contained rhododendrons from the Sikkim Himalaya. They had been collected by Joseph Hooker. Joseph Hooker was a botanist who had cut his teeth on an expedition to the Antarctic Islands some years previously. And in 1847, he set off for the Himalaya range in order to advance his career. He was interested in going to an interesting botanical place and the Sikkim Himalaya suggested an unexplored area on the map. It was a very fortuitous choice by Joseph Hooker to have visited the Sikkim Himalaya because it so happened that these valleys, sitting under the third highest peak of the Himalaya range, Kanchenjunga, was where the rhododendron floras of the eastern and western Himalaya met, so it was exceptionally rich. And altogether, he discovered 25 new species of rhododendron to science. What is unusual is that he also sent seed back to his father at the Royal Botanic Gardens, Kew. And many of these were of large arboreal species. They're big tree forms of rhododendrons, such as Rhododendron grande and Falconeri. Now, when David Moore received these seeds here, he also had information from uh, William Hooker, Joseph Hooker's father, about the conditions, the, the soil, the temperatures of the forest in which the seed had been collected. So of course, David Moore initially grew these rhododendrons under glass in the curvilinear range right behind me. But he was also aware that many hardy species of rhododendron had been introduced from Europe, from the Americas, and from Asia over the previous 20 or 30 years. And he knew that these survived out of doors. So species such as rhododendron arboreum and campanulatum were already thriving down at Kilmacurra. Kilmacurra was owned by the Acton family. It's about 40, 50 kilometers south of Glasnevin. In the uh, Wicklow Mountains, it had a wonderful rainfall. It had wonderful acidic soils, a perfect match in many ways for the Sikkim Himalaya. And so David Moore sent these plants down to Kilmacurra when he realized they were reaching the roof of this glass house and they would never reach proper maturity here as big 30 to 40 foot tall trees. So these trees were transported off to Kilmacurra in the early 1860s where they soon began to thrive. And in no, no less than 20 or 30 years, they were blooming as large trees, almost as big as they were out in their native haunts. It was his family connection between David Moore and Thomas and Janet Acton that was the catalyst to build this remarkable collection at Kilmacurra. And it was little wonder that it therefore became one of the foremost rhododendron gardens on this island. After David Moore, Frederick Moore, his son, took over the running of the National Botanic Gardens here in Glasnevin. And between them, father and son carried on this relationship for over 80 years with the Actons of Kilmacurra. And so it is today, 180 years later, that we can look back and, and marvel at the way that Kilmacurra has now come under the management of the National Botanic Gardens. And we have got this collection so willingly shared by David Moore all those years ago under our management once more. And it's a great pleasure here to be able to introduce our head gardener, Seamus O'Brien. Seamus O'Brien transferred from the National Botanic Gardens in Glasnevin about 16 years ago. He moved down to Kilmacurra and his passion uh, and zeal for rhododendron culture, their history and knowledge about the genus has very much flourished. And I'm delighted to report that this year, Seamus was the winner of the Royal Horticultural Society's Loda Rhododendron Cup. This is awarded to somebody who has shown great distinction in the conservation, the management, the cultivation of the genus Rhododendron. And this is something that Seamus has absolutely excelled at. And it is also very fitting that it is almost exactly 80 years ago that Frederick Moore received the RHS Loder Cup for exactly the same reason, his passion for rhododendrons, which he shared with that garden all those years ago. And so we're going to pass over now to Seamus, who's going to show us a bit about the literature and archives based here at Glasnevin that inform our knowledge of the history of the genus uh, in Ireland and how these 
collections reached Kilmacurra. We've heard from Matthew the important role the Moors of Glasnevin played in, in building the collection at Kilmacurra. What makes the collection at Kilmacurra so important is that it's very well documented, it's very well recorded, and we have those records here in the archives at the National Botanic Gardens Glasnevin in Dublin. And here, for example, is the plant book. This records the dispatch and the income of plants uh, to, throughout the Victorian period. Uh, there's a number of important dates in here. So this is March 1836, and this is seed coming in from Sri Lanka, then Ceylon, and it's the first ever introduction of Rhododendron arboreum subspecies Zeylanicum. Fast forwarding, if we go into the 22nd of April 1850, there's a large consignment of seed comes in from the Sikkim Himalaya, and there are collections of Sir Joseph Dalton Hooker. So Hooker, as uh, you'll see uh, throughout the, our week of activities, um, he was a British botanist uh, who travelled through the Sikkim Himalaya during the late 1840s and 1850. He was responsible for the introduction of several species of rhododendrons. So this is one of the most lavish floralegia of the 19th century, illustrations of Himalayan plants produced in 1850. This wonderful frontispiece, which is the work of Walter Hood Fitch, Q's really prolific uh, botanical illustrator, what you've got to remember about this frontispiece is that many of the plants depicted here had not yet flowered in Europe. This includes plants like Magnolia Campbelli or the blue Himalayan poppy. And the blue Himalayan poppy, the very first time it blossomed in cultivation, was here in the gardens at Glasnevin, Mechanopsis aculeata. So it, it's a wonderful and quite rare work with all of these wonderful Himalayan plants, including rhododendrons. Probably uh, the most important of Hooker's works is Rhododendrons of the Sikkim Himalaya. So this lavish work was produced between 1849 and 1851 in three parts, while Hooker was actively exploring the Himalaya. So this is just one plate, it's hand-drawn, it's the work of Walter Hood Fitch again, and it's Rhododendron fulgens. Um, so this is a, a species that's found at high altitude in the Himalaya, these wonderful red flowers and this wonderful fawn-coloured ingimentum. And this, of course, is based on Joseph Hooker's field sketches and the herbarium specimens that he sent back to Kew in London. So this is one of a number of species that we've reintroduced to the collections at Kilmacurra, not just fulgens, but also rhododendron barbatum, the bearded rhododendron. So this is a, a recent publication in Curtis's Botanical Magazine from Kilmacurra plant, and it is uh, illustrated by a Wicklow-based uh, botanical artist, Lynn Stringer. But as we'll see, the Himalaya and India was not the only source of plants for Kilmacurra during the 19th century. In the latter half of the 19th century, China opened up to the West. Um, and in the 1880s and 1890s, there was a staggering 2,500 French Catholic missionaries based in China, and many of them made great plant hunters, including people like Armand David, and in particular, Pierre Jean-Marie Delavay. So in 1883, Delavay climbed a mountain called the Sangshan above Dali in Yunnan province. He collected several rhododendrons, and he sent the seed back to the Villemarin nursery outside of uh, Paris. They raised many of his rhododendron seedlings, and Vilmarin dispatched those seedlings on to Kew. Such was the fame of Kilmacurra in the late 19th century that Kew dispatched the seedlings directly to Thomas and Janet Acton at Kilmacurra, with the result that many of these species blossomed for the first time outside their native China at Kilmacurra, including this wonderful uh, rhododendron arboreum subspecies Delavei. So this is named for Delavay, it's native to China, Vietnam and parts of Thailand. And it blossomed in our gardens for the very first time in 1904. And incredibly, the same plant is in bloom with us to, to this day. So Delavay was one of those early pioneers and another great pioneer was Dr. Augustine Henry. So Augustine Henry was an Irishman. He traveled out to China in 1881. And between 1881 and 1900, he sent back to the Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew a staggering 158,000 herbarium specimens. He sent seed to Kew, but he also sent seed here to the gardens. And it was Augustine Henry who was to reveal to the West the staggering wealth of the flora of China. And as a result of his persistence and perseverance, uh, a great number of plant hunters followed 
in his suit. So people like E.H. Wilson, Reginald Farrer, and of course one of the greatest of them all, George Forrest, a Scotsman who was based at the Royal Botanic Garden, Edinburgh. Uh, George Forrest sent back something like 70,000 herbarium specimens to, to Edinburgh. He employed over 50 Chinese men to collect, and he sent back staggering numbers of plants over the years. These are his field notes based here in the garden. So all of his collections were given individual field numbers, and that's really valuable for us today because we can look up at Kilmacara, we can, we can look at his plants that still survive with us today, and lo and behold, those collections are still there underneath with, with their field numbers. Uh, George Forrest uh, was, as I say, a prolific collector, um, and his, his collections came to Glasnevin and to Kilmacara by two means. Firstly, of course, directly to the garden, um, his seed uh, came to us, and our seed share at Last Event was sponsored by Lionel de Rothschild of Eggsbury fame. And you can see here, Lionel de Rothschild, uh, his, his seed his seed share is being sent on to Glasnevin in 1927. And also Captain Acton. So Captain Acton inherited the Kilmacurra estate when his uncle Thomas died in 1908. And Charles Acton became a, a really keen uh, plantsman. Um, sadly, he was killed in the First World War and he received Forest Chinese seedlings from J.C. Williams from Kerhays Castle in Cornwall. So Captain Acton was a great plantsman, and what is a shame is that uh, he died in the war. Had he had he survived, there would be uh, an even greater garden at Kilmacurra today. So the next major plant hunter that uh, occurs in our collections at Kilmacurra, of course, is Captain Frank Kingdon Ward. So he's the longest serving plant hunter in the field. His very first expedition began in 1909, and his last one was to Mount Victoria in Burma in 1956. So he's responsible, for example, for the introduction of the fabulous blue poppy, Mechanopsis Baileyi, and also plants like Rhododendron Magnificum, seen here, painted by the Wicklow-based uh, botanical artist, Lynn Stringer from a plant at Mount Stewart, and this is one of Frank Kingdon Ward's originals. And when you look through our field notes, and again, this is Frank Kingdon Ward, field notes that have been sent on with seed to Glasnevin from Lionel de Rothschild, you can see it's annotated. The seed has been received in 1927. Uh, so these are really valuable records for us here at Glasnevin. So it wasn't just men who were doing all of this. Women played a very important role in plant hunting in the early 20th century, and from Ireland, actually, probably the greatest uh, female plant hunter was Lady Charlotte Wheelercuff, and she was from Lerat in house in County Kilkenny. She was based out in Burma, where her husband played an important role in the Burmese Board of Works, working on huge civil engineering projects. When her husband was away at work, she would often take her pony and her easel and her collecting material, and she would go collecting. And one of the places that she visited was Mount Victoria in the Chin Hills of Eastern Burma. She went up there in 1912 and again in 1914. And she sent her collections to Sir Frederick Moore at Glasnevin. Uh, little did they know at the time that this was a new unexplored flora. So she sent back to Glasnevin three new rhododendrons, Rhododendron burmanicum, Rhododendron arboreum far albotomentosum, but also Rhododendron cuffianum that bears her name. So this is an epiphytic species. It grows high in the trees. It's a very uh, elusive species. It's rarely seen in the wild. Um, and this particular image was published from Glasnevin in Kew's Curtis's Botanical Magazine uh, with a depiction of the original plant growing here in, in the gardens. So this is just a taste of some of the material that was coming in, how it's recorded here in the gardens at Glasnevin. So by the turn of the 20th century, rhododendrons had completely transformed our gardens. Uh, gardens went rapidly from the sort of very stiff formality into becoming a sort of easier, more gentle woodland gardens. And a society was set up the Rhododendron Society in 1915. Sir Frederick Moore was one of the founding members um, and it was set up for, it was a very exclusive club of just about 25 incredibly wealthy families across Britain and Ireland, but they did sterling work in promoting rhododendrons, so much so that we went to a period in Britain and Ireland called Rhododendron Mania. And this is one of the results of it. This is the, one of the first major monographs on rhododendrons, the species of rhododendrons by the Rhododendron Society. Again, gives you a, a brief taste of uh, 
what's here in the archives at Glasnevin, and this is why the collections at Kilmacurra are, are so important. It's a very well documented collection. It would be difficult to overemphasize the importance of Frederick Moore to the development of rhododendron gardens in Ireland. This month, it so happens, we are marking the centenary of Frederick Moore leaving the gardens on his retirement, uh, April 1922, after 43 years of managing the gardens here. It does seem strange to us today to look back and think that a 22-year-old was given the important role of managing an, a national institution like this. But we have to remember that Frederick Moore was born here. His, his father was running the gardens. He was born in the keeper's house. And therefore, his entire life, he would have learned from his father the management of the site. On top of that, he was also the head gardener at Trinity Botanic Gardens, um, which is down in Balls Bridge. So for three years, he was head gardener there. So he was not inexperienced as a manager. Frederick Moore was one of the founding members of the Rhododendron Society, and within his lifetime, he received many awards. The Royal Horticultural Society gave him the Veitch Memorial Medal in 1895, and in 1897, he was one of the 60 original recipients of the Victoria Medal of Honor, which is probably the Royal Horticultural Society's uh, most important honor. In 1911, he was knighted, and he was the very first person to ever be knighted for his services to horticulture, and that was during George V's coronation year visit to Dublin. Uh, he was informed at seven o'clock the evening before, so you can imagine what a short period of time he had to get himself ready to receive this honor. As well as being an extraordinary uh, and generous horticulturalist, uh, Frederick Moore was uh, one of the first people to get women gardeners trained here at Glasnevin. This was something that still hadn't been undertaken by other botanic gardens in Europe. And it gives us an insight into uh, you know, the, the problem of gender issues at that time. He didn't even inform his superiors that he had taken on these two apprentice women gardeners uh, in 1898. And thereafter, every year, two apprentice women gardeners would start. And to his credit, a lot of the official visitors would say, can we see the women gardeners? He would always say, they're not here on show. And he would refuse to, to parade them around as though they were some sort of exhibit. So the training of women gardeners is something that was uh, run for a good 30 years after that. Two lady gardeners were always present on staff. In his obituary, it was said of Sir Frederick Moore, uh, he was a tower of strength. And this is in relation to the fact of how he helped uh, many big house gardens develop. He was a regular visitor, he loved shooting, and we can see from his letters that he exchanged between the Acton family that he was regularly down there to do a bit of rough shooting, as well as to give advice about the gardens. To their credit, the Actons often didn't follow his advice, and that's one of the great beauties of horticulture. It's an experimental uh, art and science at the same time. But he was also a great friend to the Grove Annesley family in Ansgrove, which is also managed by the Office of Public Works, who look after the National Botanic Gardens also. In Rowallan, up in Northern Ireland, and Lord Hedford in Kells, all of these rhododendron gardens were very much built upon the uh, benevolence of Frederick Moore acting as, quite literally, a tower of strength to them. As Seamus has shown you, and as I hope I've quick briefly described here, the rich archives at Glasnevin give us a great insight into that period of time when these big collections were being built throughout these islands. And I hope you will take the opportunity to visit both Kilmacurra, Glasnevin, and possibly these other gardens, such as Ansgrove, which the Office of Public Works has only recently taken into um, in, uh, management. So, all of these gardens are at their prime right now. April, May uh, of spring is when the rhododendrons really flourish. So we look forward to uh, welcoming you back to other events during Rhododendron Week uh, and hope we will see you on perhaps some of the talks and walks.